Hey, this is MLB pitcher Sam Long, and you're listening to Jim on Base. The Jim on Base show has teamed up with my new friends at Old Hillside Bourbon Company. I got two of my favorite bottles here, Straight Bourbon Whiskey and the Straight Rye Whiskey. So whenever you want to get on base with that authentic Kentucky bourbon taste, make sure you visit OldHillsideBourbonCompany.com, their social media, Old Hillside CO, or pick up a bottle at BevMo and Total Wine. Old Hillside Bourbon Company. They'll always get you on base. Welcome back to another episode of the Gym on Base Show. For today's very special guest, we have on an MLB pitcher who recently signed with the Royals and has played for both the Giants and the A's. He's also a fellow NorCal guy and a fellow left-hander. So please welcome the great Sam Long. Sam, thanks for coming on. Uh, yeah, thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Yeah, it's good to have you on the show. And I think earlier you were working out, right? So uh, what was kind of on the agenda today in the gym? Uh, today was an easy day. I, uh, I just kind of started ramping up. Um, we're up only about you know a less than a month away from camp, so mm. pretty much ramped up, facing batters and throwing bullpens uh, midweek, and you know just getting back in the game mode and uh, getting ready to you know show up to camp ready to compete. So today was just a light one. I had a bullpen yesterday, so I took mm. it easy. Just moved the body around, played some light catch, and I'll face batters on Saturday. So, mm. um, but it's busy, you know. Something yeah. at this point of the year, it's something every day. I'm Monday through Saturday right now. I usually mm. take Sundays off, but yeah, there's something to do every day. Is it like a performance type gym, or because I think you've been going to a gym for a while now, right? Yeah, yeah. It's called Optimum Athletes. They've been taking care of me for the last uh, five, four or mm. five off seasons now. Yeah, they. Uh, they really helped me, um, you know, kind of turn my career around. I, I've learned a lot of new um, training methods there and just kind of learned how to be a pro. Mm. Um, you know, you take started taking the, uh, the work a little more serious uh, ever since I started going there. So they've helped me a bunch. Awesome. Yeah. When you're working out there, are you kind of communicating with a trainer or do you get to put the headphones in and play some music or? Um, so I have a really good, I have a really good relationship with my trainer. His name's Ryan Matthews. He's written all my programs. Um, so as far as training, you know, he, he helps me work through like, um, the throwing program and my lifting program, um, get them all synced up for what I'm doing on, on each end of those things. And, um, so he, he helps me lay it all out there and, uh, but I mean, it's up to me to put in the work and and execute all the all mm -hmm. the training. So I'm I'm the type of guy usually to know what I'm getting into that day. I you know before usually when I wake up, I just go through um, what I have throwing and lifting wise, uh, and I show up, kind of throw the headphones in. We know, you know, we we know what the plan is, and mm -hmm. I definitely like to have some music on during my workouts and helps me lock in a little bit. So. Yeah. yeah. Are you a, a rock guy or like hip hop or what kind of gets you going? Oh man, everything, <laughs> a little bit of everything, uh, depending on, I don't know. It depends on the day. You know, I like to switch it up though. It's okay. I usually don't listen to the same genre, you know, for a week straight. It's like mm -hmm. one or two days. I'll, I'll listen to, um, rock and then some hip hop, old school, new stuff. Same thing, like with rock, like early two thousands, like grunge stuff. Just kind of <laughs> switch it up here and there, but yeah. uh, no, I, I I definitely enjoy music and um and just growing up, that was something that my dad was always into, and my mom was a singer ah. and dancer. Um, so we always had music on, and both of my parents were you know fans of fans of music. We'd go to concerts and all that. So oh, nice, yeah. How much uh, time do you take off after a season? Because it seems like the off season workout wise is becoming shorter and shorter for guys, right? Yeah. Yeah, it definitely is. Um, this year, depending on the year, I made it through healthy this year. So there's really nothing I needed to rehab when I got home. Um, so I, I took a little bit of time off just to rest my arm, probably a week or two. Mm. Um, and then I got back into it. And I mean, you ease into it pretty gradually um for the first month it's like light catch for three days a week and um the next month after that it starts to ramp up a little more mm -hmm. 
to where we're at now. It's six days of throwing a week, and um, <clears throat> but really not much time. Uh, it, last, after twenty two, I had the oblique injury, and um, so I had about a month and a half of no throw, just getting that getting that um the oblique right mm -hmm. um but it was a relief getting through last season healthy and you know not having to come home and worry about something yeah. nagging so i was able to get right into it and been a good off season so far yeah i think it's been a great off season right because uh, i think you got married too right i did yeah <laughs> november 11th we've been together since college 2015 so going on nine years now and she's been with me through everything the ups and downs, you know, figuring out where we're staying this year. I mean, where there's still stuff that, you know, we we work through and it's it's awesome having someone to, to do it all with. So yeah, I'm 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 happy we we were able to it was a great wedding, you know, all of our loved ones around us. It was it was an awesome day. And I think uh, I saw your how you proposed, uh, I think it was in like a helicopter right over Tahoe. Yeah. <laughs> it looked like a scene out of the bachelor. <laughs> That's what everyone compares it to. That's funny. <laughs> yeah, I uh, my uncle has a a, a stuntman buddy. Oh really? Yeah, uh, yeah, and he he stays in Tahoe. He has a lot of jobs in L.A. and stuff. What you would think a stuntman would do, you'd, you know what? Uh, forget this. I'm not flying. I'll fly myself down there back and yeah. forth. So, <laughs> yeah, I had the idea. I was gonna do it in a helicopter, but um, he has a four seater plane. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he agreed to help me do it. And, <laughs> It was cool, and especially seeing Tahoe from that view. I've never, mm. I've never flown over Tahoe like that before. So that was, <laughs> that was awesome. Yeah, I bet. Well, uh, when you are married and you're living together, um, is it harder now to like hide presents from each other? Because we just got over Christmas, so is it a little bit more strategy involved? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little bit. I mean, she doesn't like surprises, and okay. I love them. You know, I like to, <laughs> I like to keep her on her toes, and. When those, those those Amazon packages start coming in and stuff, it's like, what is that? Uh, yeah, something, I don't know, yeah. supplements or something. I don't know. <laughs> they, come, they come too quick sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's like Amazon's crazy. Amazon yeah. is on another level. <laughs> well, you signed with the Royals uh, in December. Um, so I was wondering, does the wife come to spring training with you or how does that all work out? Yeah, yeah, she uh she's been traveling with me since 2019. She um so when I got drafted it was after my junior year and she was still a sophomore in college. So she had for the first few years of pro ball, she um had to stay back because she was finishing her degree at Sac State. And so once she f finished that, she was uh, able to start traveling with me. So in 2019 was our first year um together like she was able to come with me and experience the the whole the whole baseball season, um, and it was great. And it's nice, you know, it's nice having, like I said earlier, it's just nice having someone to go through it with. And yeah, um, that first year in nineteen, we in Kannapolis, North Carolina, she stayed on an air mattress with me for the entire year, and wow. Um, so she's more than proved her worth, you know, and, <laughs> and, and, uh, made the same, you know, made those sacrifices with me. So yeah, that, that's, that's been huge. Well, what's the, uh, spring training living situation like? Cause for people that don't know, it's only like a couple months, if even that. And so do you do like yeah. an Airbnb? Does the team set you up with something? Like, how does that work? Uh, you can go either route there so you can, you can book something on your own. I think most guys with families, they choose to book an Airbnb so they can have a little more space. But there's also the option of them put, putting you up in, a, in one of the team hotels or or something like that. I, I went the Airbnb route. Um, they give you a living allowance um, if you decide to not stay in the hotel. So they give you a little stipend to cover the, the Airbnb um, so that's what I'm doing. I got a, I, we got a place in surprise 45 days, I think is the whole camp. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, down in Arizona, it's the, it's the busy time of year for them. So yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, we, we found a place that wasn't, wasn't too bad on the, you know, okay. on the price. So it was good. We figured yeah. it out. Well, that's good. And did you guys do any, uh, off season trips then or AKA honeymoon or is that kind of waiting for the next off season? 
Yeah. So we since we got married in November, it was a little too late into the off season to go do you know what I wanted to do, like a one or two week trip out, you know, somewhere yeah uh tropical and hang out on the beach or something so after the wedding we just went to disneyland for a couple of days oh cool <laughs> <laughs> yeah we uh we we flew down the day after the wedding and um just to get out of town and you know hang out just us two before we you know get back into the routine of the off season but i'm thinking after next season as soon as this as soon as the year is over my downtime um will be you know one or two week trip somewhere uh maybe maybe europe or uh, maybe hawaii we've talked about she's she's greek and we had a greek wedding so we thought maybe greece would be cool yeah um to do maybe a little a cruise around the islands in greece Mm -hmm. uh or do maui or something hang out on the beach yeah sounds like you got some options (laughs) yeah we'll see (laughs) we'll see we definitely want to do something though but yeah, the we did a two day trip to Disneyland and and one day is enough yeah. in Disneyland for, for for me. I mean, if I was about 10, 10 years younger, I could I yeah. could walk around that place for a week straight, but I was gassed after the first day. We did the wedding, flew down the next day, did Disneyland all day, and that second day I we we had to sit down every hundred yards. We were like we're just, we're done. <laughs> so that could be your off-season workout day, getting your steps in. No, oh, it was. We took. I think we walked like ten miles the first day. Wow. Yeah. What's your uh, if if you only have one ride to go on? Do you have a, a favorite one that you go to? Uh, it's between the Incredicoaster, Coaster, which used to be California Screaming. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, the one that just takes off like and everyone's in slow motion on the side when it shoots you off yeah they're, they're all just <laughs> laughing at everybody on the ride <laughs> yeah um either that or the the uh guardians of the galaxy one's oh, cool the drop one tower, right? tower of the terror tower yeah. of terror yeah the elevator one yeah that's um, up there for me yeah yeah but i hadn't ridden a roller coaster in a while and my stomach was like geez what's going on <laughs> yeah, uh, nice but uh loop. yeah the I heard the real because I'm a fan of roller coasters, but I've heard the real spot to go for roller coasters around here is uh, Magic Mountain, and I've driven past it like hundreds of times mm-hmm. and, and never stopped and went. So I'm the same way; never been there. <laughs> yeah, I pass it down, pass it all the time. But I heard those are the biggest and best ones around. So maybe I have to. I grew up going to uh, it's Discovery Kingdom now, the Six Flags in oh. Valley. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah, I did that one a lot with the Medusa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think is that the one with the Top Gun ride too? Ah, uh, shoot, maybe, yeah, maybe a... now. I haven't, it's been a while. Yeah, me it too. used to be Marine World. I knew it as mm. Marine World growing up. Okay. Yeah. Well, you grew up too, not too far from uh, Lake Tahoe, right? So, mm-hmm. are you a skier or snowboard, or is that something that you have to avoid when you're playing? Though, like, is that in the contract or? Yeah, it, it, it's. It's yeah, I think it's like extreme sports. I grew up, uh, so my dad is actually from Tahoe, or he moved to Tahoe and he, he was in high school. So 1985, the, my dad's side of the family has lived there. So I grew up going there a lot. My grandparents um, moved to uh, Lincoln a few years ago, but mm. growing up, they we'd always go to their house in Tahoe. I was there probably four or five times a year. Um, with the hour and a half drive from sack, it was easy. So I, uh, I did more sledding growing up though. I mean, even back then I was cautious about, you know, not breaking any bones, falling off, <laughs> falling off the skis. And, yeah. uh, so I did a lot of sledding and snowball fights and football in the snow, but, uh, never got into snowboarding. I think, uh, a little bit in high school, I did some wakeboarding just with the river so close to Sacramento. Mm. Um, I was a fan of that. That was fun, but I don't know. Falling in the snow, you're, you know, if you fall and you get start getting, it's all in your wrists, or, you know, you, you, you're cold all day. And I didn't like that. I didn't like that growing up. I just wanted to, you know, sled down the hill a few times and I was good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I'm curious. Uh, I grew up in Northern California too, not too far from you. Uh, did you ever come through Tracy? Cause that's where I'm from. 
Yeah, yeah, I've driven through Tracy a lot. It's a good drive through town. Just keep going. Driven through, yeah. <laughs> Notice how I said driven through. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> never really, I've never spent much time there. Uh, but it's, uh, is it on I-5 or 99? Uh, I-5 goes behind it, like if you're coming from the Bay Area. And then also, uh, was it 205 goes right through it? 205, okay. Yeah. My mom's from Merced. I was mm. born in Clovis. I went to high and... school in Ripon. Oh, okay. Nice. Yeah. yeah. I yeah, so I've been I'm in Northern California, pretty familiar with the with it. So, gotcha. Well, who were your yeah. favorite teams in growing up? Um, I grew up rooting for the Giants, especially when um, the older I got and the more I started to understand the game. I loved rooting for Barry Bonds um, in the Giants, and uh, but the River Cats were right around the corner, mm-hmm. also. So you see a lot of A's guys go through there like Nick Swisher and mm-hmm. um, Eric Chavez, I think would do some rehab here and there, yeah. down there. And Barry Zito. Uh, I love Barry Zito growing up. Um, fellow lefty. Fellow lefty, fellow curveball thrower. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Have you gotten to meet him? No, no. Uh, the A's had the, um, like the Hall of Oakland A's Hall of Fame this year. I saw Jason Giambi. That was pretty cool, but yeah. I don't think Barry Zito was there. Okay. Um, and he's a country. He's a country music artist now. Yeah, I think he's like they a play a song player. all the time. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, they play a song every like the fifth inning every game in Oakland this year. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, you know the the Yankees were really good too. So they won so much, so it was hard not to <laughs> to to respect it. Yeah. Um, and but there were so many kids around me that. Were, were Yankees fans growing up. I'd say outside of the California teams, the Yankees were the big ones around here. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, what were the odds, though, for you to then play for the Giants and the A's? That's got to be pretty convenient for your family, too, to come see you. <laughs> yeah, nuts. <laughs> it's nuts. I would, yeah, never never dreamed of it. And Sacramento. Yeah. Um, so literally the three teams that I grew up, you know, learning to love the game – watching is i uh, got a chance to play for so that's something something i could have never you know thought would happen but mm-hmm. here we are and uh <laughs> it, it definitely made the the travel on my family easier yeah um, oakland's a little shorter drive i mean you're splitting hairs there but it's uh it's about an hour 30 and it's, you got to cross the bit uh the bridge to get to san francisco mm-hmm. um but so it, super fortunate to um, to get get a chance. I mean, especially coming through the minors, my my family is on the the west coast, and a lot of my the teams I played for um, were on the east coast. Mm-hmm. Uh, so really, until I got called up to AAA um, with the Giants, that was the first time uh, a lot of my family and friends were able to see me pitch um, professionally. Wow! Yeah. Well, it's got to be interesting, too. I was thinking of some teammates you've had, uh, especially on the A's last year, Tyler Soderstrom from Turlock, and I think mm-hmm. uh, James Caprillion, I think he said his grandma was in Walnut Creek. So uh, mm. good amount of NorCal connections there. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's another one coming up with the A's right now, uh, um, Daniel Susak. Oh, yeah. He's okay. from he's from Sacramento. Um, Is his brother Andrew? Yeah, that's his okay. brother. He got a chance to play for the Giants, yeah. but a lot of yeah, a lot of baseball here in NorCal. You know, a yeah, lot yeah. of a lot of good a lot of good guys have come out of here. Yeah, did you know of or play against uh, Logan Webb or JD Davis when you were kind of coming up in high school? Yeah, I knew, I knew, uh, I knew Webb a little bit. Um, we played on a couple travel teams together, like uh, oh, okay. I think because he was a football guy growing up, so the summers. He was getting ready for football season, um, but he's filling a, a little bit on some travel teams that I was playing for, um, but really not until high school is mm-hmm. when I started getting familiar with those guys. Uh, JD out of Elk Grove High School and and Webb in Rockland, um, but definitely knew of them. Coming out, um, coming out of high school, I was a little bit behind like strength-wise in high school, so I mean, I was a good pitcher, but I don't think I was throwing hard enough to get, you know, the the attention from the pro scouts. 
Mm -hmm. Um, so, but those guys were, were definitely ready and like Rowdy Telez, Mm. he was ready to go out of high school. Webby, obviously, um, Dylan Carlson, um, I think Dom, uh, Dom, do you know who Dom Nunez is? I'm not sure if he was out of high school or not. Uh, Oh, he went to Oregon state. No, he, he went to Oregon state. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of guys, you know, you're trying to compete with and be on that same level as, uh, eventually, you know, my time came a little later, but Mm -hmm. it all, uh, you know, has a funny way of working out. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Well, growing up, uh, being a Giants fan, it must have been pretty surreal um, having people like Buster Posey as your teammate. So, uh, was it true he was one of like the first guys to kind of greet you in spring training? Mm-hmm. Yeah, in twenty in twenty one, um, I threw a bullpen to him, <laughs> and I think yeah, my first bullpen was to him, and um, it took me a little bit to get over <laughs> the fact that these were the guys I grew up rooting for and um watching them win the world series um a few times made it a little harder to <laughs> get over i get asked like you know you, you get you get a chance to play with these guys how do you get over that like how do you get over that hump of like going about your business normally and uh i think i mean it was it was it was it was different it was hard and i especially with not really having any experience above a ball Mm. coming into it. Um, I still had so much to learn and, um, but I did my best to adapt and, um, mesh with the team as best I could. So, yeah, but it was, it was, it was something, you know, something I feel super fortunate to have a chance to, you know, play with those guys that I grew up rooting for. Did you, uh, as a fan, did you attend any of the world series parades? No, okay. never had a chance. I was always in school. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was all, but I, I mean, uh, I knew a lot of people that went to them and they'd, they'd do the World Series trophy tour and they'd always oh, yeah. come through Sacramento. <laughs> um, so I might have gone to one of those. Um, one of the three, which is crazy to mm-hmm. think about. 2010 and 2012, I was still in high school. Gotcha. And then 14 was my freshman year in college. Mm. Yeah. So I think that was the most memorable one, that 14 one when I was in the baseball house at Sac state with a a lot of my teammates watching that. And obviously a lot of them were giants fans too. So some good times. Yeah, definitely. Well, uh, your dad, he played basketball, right? So Mm -hmm. um, I got, how tall is he? And uh, how was your hoops game? (laughs) He's six, four. Okay. Something like yeah, maybe a little taller, somewhere somewhere around six three, six four, uh, maybe a little more. But uh, he was good. He was a good. He was a good player in college, and um, I could shoot and dribble a little bit, but that's about it. I was always baseball, and there was one summer going into my uh, seventh grade year where I was going to try out for the basketball team, and so I trained with him all summer, like tried to learn a little bit about the game and technique and the strategy, like the X's and O's of it all. And um, that's probably the most time I put into that sport. And like a a day before tryouts came, I was like, Hey, I just want to play baseball. So (laughs) sorry, we wasted our whole summer (laughs) training for this, but uh, my heart's telling me not to do this and focus on baseball. So, but I always enjoyed playing it, you know, Mm -hmm. shooting hoops out in front of the house and, um playing horse and mm. around the world and knockout and stuff that's that's where i enjoyed the game um okay. never got too organized with it though are you a kings or warriors fan because i know logan webb he's a kings fan so where do you go yeah i'm kings okay kings, no, no doubt about it <laughs> <Gotcha>. <laughs> no doubt about that i uh i've been a kings fan since i could remember oh two when they were I was pretty young, but I, I could remember those playoff runs and always getting beat by Kobe and stuff. But yeah, there's some Peja. good teams there. Peja, Vladi, Chris Weber, yeah, Bibby. Mike Bibby. Yeah, some good teams. Um, those are fun to root for. And now that they're, they're competitive now, so that's been a lot of fun to watch too. Yeah, yeah, definitely a good young team. 
Um, mm-hmm. And one thing I thought was interesting about you, um, you were drafted by the Tampa Bay Rays in 2016 out of Cal State Sacramento. And then uh, you got cut in spring training right of 2018, and you're kind of out of the game for like six or seven months. And mm-hmm. it sounded like you went, uh, you, t- you took EMT school, and I know your uncle, uh, I think he's a firefighter in Tahoe, right? So was that kind yeah. of a somewhat of a plan, like a backup plan? Yeah, um, that was always kind of the plan B for mm. um, whatever happened after baseball. I uh, I was always interested in you know EMS and um, helping people. So once once I got released, I just figured you know the the first step was going to get EMT certification. That would get me a, get me an idea of what uh what what it's all about it's kind of baseline but you you learn a lot and um, psi scene safe <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> yeah shoot op what is it OP, oh yeah opqrst <laughs> yeah opqrst don't ask uh, me to define that into my brain for like six weeks straight yeah where'd you go <laughs> but, for uh, that i went to sac the sac state program it's oh, uh okay i've actually heard they yeah. have a good program there yeah and it's accelerated so I, the, the way it worked out was I got released in spring training, which was around February, March, um, and it was too late to register for the spring semester. Mm. Um, so I, I figured keep me busy during the summer. I'd, I'd do that six week program at Sac State and just enroll in classes after that um, to finish up my degree. They kind of fit in perfectly to, you know get get the ball rolling on on the next chapter and i did it and uh learned a lot but you know something was telling me that i that i had some more to give um, Mm -hmm. to baseball and it was uh i think for the for the emt class i didn't really feel it as much because i was such a busy class and there was so much i had to learn and Mm -hmm. um just to just to get through it but once i enrolled in the fall semester of 18 was when i had you know kind of settled down and i was able to start in october baseball was on and i'm watching all those games and that's when i you know the 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 ideas started coming and that's when i made the decision so to start playing again um but i mean that was it was a huge part of my process was, you know, I realized what it, what, uh, my life would look like without baseball. And not that, that that was a, um, not that there was anything bad in front of me, but it was just, you know, something telling me that I needed to give it another shot. And, um, I'm definitely happy I did, but there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot, there's a lot of, uh, things I learned in that year or in that time off. It's got to be interesting too when you're like, at, especially at the Coliseum, you kind of have to walk by the paramedics sometimes where they're kind of mm-hmm. positioned and just think, mm-hmm. wow, I, it's, it probably makes you think, man, I'm glad I'm still on the baseball side of things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, during BP, it's funny. The, um, the paramedics would, would go walk the, um, walk the warning track yeah. around us during BP. And I would always turn around and like say hello to them and, and, uh, you know, but it definitely, yeah, it puts it in perspective to, yeah. <laughs> um, to see, but yeah, I've, I've got a brother that's going through it right oh. now with, uh, with, he did his EMT over the summer. Okay. Um, and I told him, Hey, maybe, you know, maybe I can make a call over the call folks at the Coliseum and yeah. see if they have an opening over there. <laughs> oh yeah. There, there definitely is some openings with uh Falk. <laughs> <laughs> so I think, uh, I don't know. It'd be a cool opportunity for him. Yeah. Um, it was either that. I mean, my plan was to go, uh, um, after the EMT, I was, I was gonna start applying for, um, like ambulance services, like AMR. Yeah. Um, alpha one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Alpha one was the one I went on a ride along with. Okay. Um, did you see anything and, or was it kind of, did, was it the ride along curse where it was slow all day? <laughs> oh, so slow. It was so slow. It was, I did two ride alongs. One with the one, the one with alpha one was slow, like, um, nursing homes and, 
Um, I think that's a, a bulk of those, the calls that they get, right. Or yeah, or from, um, nursing homes and stuff like that. But I went on another ride along with the uh, Sac city fire and they put me, I think it was like, uh, North Highlands or something like that and got a few calls that day. Nice. Definitely got to see what, <laughs> you know, definitely got to see what uh, I would be seeing on a regular basis, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's the exposure you need to see, be, yeah. you know, getting into it. Mm -hmm. You gotta see if you can handle it. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, um, I think, uh, I heard you, you kind of made like an arm slot change, right? And that kind of got you back on track to build your way back up to the big leagues again. Yeah. Yeah. It was over the top, like high three quarter, um, all the way up until pro ball. And then, uh, tried the sidearm thing for, um, 2017 and just wasn't really clicking and it was something that I'd never done. Yeah. When I decided to start up again, I just, you know, went back to what was natural, what felt the most natural and what I had the most confidence in. Mm. Yeah. Well, speaking about uh, your big leagues and you made your debut June 9th, 2021, you pitched four innings, had seven strikeouts. Uh, did you keep anything from that? Like a ball or lineup card or anything? Yeah, yeah, I got the lineup call uh, card. Uh, got it signed. Um, got it signed by a few teammates, and I got the ball first strikeout. Oh, cool! Um, Is it in boxes right now? Is it on display yet, or no? It, it's in boxes just because I've been moving around all the oh, time, okay. and somewhere with our wedding gifts. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm not getting rid of those. That's for sure. I'll, yeah. I'll save all that. And I got another one this year is my hundredth strikeout. Mm. So I got that one. Um, that one's up here. I haven't, I just, I think I stuffed that one in my baseball bag this year and, uh, just put it on the mantle. Yeah. <laughs> um, just cause it was lying around. <laughs> and you got but your it's first it's good. Yeah, I have that. That's okay. You kept it. Probably my favorite one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was going to ask, does that drive you nuts? Like, um, since you're a pitcher, you know what it feels like to give a hit. Does it drive you nuts when a pitcher gets a hit off of you? Uh, I, I gave up a few hits to some pitchers, and yeah, that's frustrating. <laughs> I mean, pitching you can you can make it so complicated, and you can get pretty you can get pretty in depth with it. But I think I learned a lot when I was up in the box. You know, learned a lot about how hard hitting is, and mm. um, that's helped me. You know, that's helped me with keeping pitching simple and instead of instead of thinking too deep into it you mm. you you understand how hard it is i mean those guys are you know, they're hitting every day so it's a little different than yeah. you know me taking my at bat once a year but you're not really in the groove right yeah you, you don't have any timing or anything like that but it, it does definitely show you what it you know how difficult it is Deion sanders said it how crazy of an athlete that guy was. He said the hardest thing to do in sports was to hit a hit that white ball, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Well, speaking of uh, hitting a white ball, are you into golf at all? Because uh, I think <laughs> of some of the pit, uh, teammates you've played with, uh, Logan Webb and uh, J.P. Sears, right? I think they're pretty good golfers, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we, I've played a lot of golf with those two. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, shoot, J.P. can drive the hell out of that thing. He... he <laughs> He smokes it. Uh, he's not the biggest guy in the world either. It's kind no, of but he's just, he gets, he cranks on that. It's, <laughs> it's pretty cool to watch. Uh, but yeah, a lot of my teammates, pitchers, especially, um, Brent Ricker is a good golfer though. Oh yeah. Um, out of the position players is one of the, one of the best position player golfers that I've, I've played with. And, uh, okay. yeah, it's just a great way to get out, um, get out of the routine a bit during the crazy year. And, mm -hmm. When you have some downtime during the off season, it's fun to get out there with some with some buddies and hang out, chase that white ball around for a little bit. <laughs> yeah, if you don't go nuts on the baseball field, you can go nuts on the golf course. <laughs> oh my god, drive you nuts! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I try not. I don't play it. I, I tell myself I don't play enough to get mad at this. Oh, okay. You know, I'm not playing well, so I try to manage expectations there. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good way to look at it. <laughs> But I do enjoy I do enjoy the game a lot, you know. It's a lot it's a lot like baseball. You know, mm. it's uh, uh mental as it is physical. Yeah. 
Well, uh, speaking of physical, uh, you're a fellow left-hander, and since you're from this area, you played on the Giants, I got to ask, have you been to the left-handed store at Pier 39? Lefties? Yeah. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> of course. I did. <laughs> Some left-handed scissors. And, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and I think they even have, I was, like, I, That's true, though. It's weird. I can't cut. I yeah, can't oh, okay. Scissors. Yeah, I can't I, use scissors with my right hand. <laughs> uh, uh, see, I'm kind of both, and I think I've adapted without even realizing it. I didn't mm -hmm. even know until a couple years ago there's left-handed scissors, so it's kind yeah. of it's weird. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Lefties are weird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, do you have a favorite mound in the big leagues? I've heard a lot of people mention Dodger Stadium as one of their favorites for some reason. Dodger Stadium is – there's something about Dodger Stadium that makes you feel a little closer to the plate mm. for whatever reason, whether it's the backdrop or um, – but, yeah, you definitely feel like you're on top of the guy uh, there. Um, the Oakland mound was really nice. I think that's one of the steeper mounds in the league. Oh. Yeah. Um, and a lot of a lot of hitters talk about it as well, where the mound just looks so big. Um, oh, okay. And there was something about the Yankee Stadium clay that they use was nothing like I'd ever experienced. It was like your cleats just stick in there, huh. like it, it's like play doh that holds up. It's crazy. I don't even know how to describe it, but it's and they cover it with like this super fine um sandy it's not even dirt it's more like sand huh uh, okay so it gives like a different look to it uh, that was probably the most memorable mound i pitched on was yankee stadium's mound just for those reasons and it being in in new york that was that was a fun one atlanta has the has the uh shortest mound oh, okay that one yeah that one almost feels like you're on flat ground <laughs> So that's probably not a fun one to be on then. Uh, I don't think it's ideal. Yeah. For me too. I mean, I got the big curveball that goes down. Uh, so yeah. being in Oakland, then talking about it being tall, that just creates that angle even more. Mm -hmm. Well, speaking about your story and, you know, you kind of made a comeback in a way. Um, I know you've mentioned two words that kind of stuck out to me. Uh, consistency. So uh, I think you said that kind of tied in with your workouts, right? Like just having that consistent um, mindset about things. Mm -hmm. That was huge. I mean, learning how to learning how to be a professional was um, definitely the biggest step I needed to take out of college. Uh, you, know, you have school to worry about pretty much your whole life leading up to the day you get drafted um, and so many other things going on in your life that you have to focus on. But once you're a professional baseball player, that's your job. And that's your, so grasping the fact that it's going to be, you know, October, two weeks into October or whenever your season ends um, all the way through September, you know, it's a, it's a full time 24, seven, 365 thing. And um, I think once I realized that, was uh that's when things started turning around and just having that uh having that mindset in, into each day that it's you just got to figure out um you just got to figure out how to get the work in and and stay motivated through it all and um now it, you know now it's easy you know mm -hmm. i get a chance to pitch in the big leagues i'm almost 30 years old and feel lucky to do it but you want to keep doing it and you're willing to make those sacrifices to make it happen. So the motivation is easy to find um, once it starts clicking. Uh, but for me, yeah, that was, that was the biggest hurdle I needed to get over was putting that, putting the work in the consistent work in, not just when you feel like it. Yeah. You brought up, uh, we brought up consistency and another, the other word was confidence. I think I've heard you mention that. And it made me wonder too about baseball these days. They seem to be, really on the cutting edge of things when it comes to sports with like mental health, especially the giants. So is that just the giants or is kind of baseball in general, uh, kind of welcoming that in from your perspective? Uh, it's grown, it's grown a lot since I, since 2016 when I got drafted, I don't think you heard of too much about, you know, mental skills, mental health coordinators and specialists. Um, but now, every, I mean, every team I've been a part of has had someone, um, that you could go to and talk to about all the stuff mentally that goes on. Um, mm -hmm. 
in in this in this sport. So uh, there's a Andy McKay is one out of the area. I think he was one of the first ones to be hired and by the Rockies, uh, and he's now with the Mariners um, mm-hmm. in a different role. But uh, he was one of the first ones, and like I knew, I remember growing up. I think I was like a sophomore in high school. And it was a big deal that he got hired as, you know, that, that position. Wow. Um, but now you look around and every, everybody's got one. And yeah. uh, I think it's, I think it's, it's huge. I mean, whether you're a guy that needs to talk through things or um, look for ways to, um, you know, just trying to find that extra edge. And um, if something's holding you back, you know, it's good to address that or if something, um, you know, you're just looking to improve on something um, mentally, then it's a great, it's a great resource to have, um, you know, and at this point, at this level, you, you, a lot of guys are willing to, to exhaust all of those resources possible mm-hmm. to be the, the best version of themselves. I've definitely utilized it and, you know, figured out different ways to, you know, when you got no outs and runners, on all the bases and a beast at the plate, you know, how are you going to handle that and how are you going to get through that and uh, keep attacking? That's a, uh, you know, that's a big part of the game, figuring out how to get through those, those crazy situations. You know, it's not always, you're not always cruising out there. Could that affect like how they talk to you? Like maybe in the past, they could be more like kind of get on you or say, come on, let's do this or whatnot. Does it affect how they talk to you now on the mound? I think each uh, coach has their own styles of, uh, and you know, how they think is the best way to get through to each guy is probably going to be different. Um, I think that's more built on the relationship you have on with, with that particular coach. And if he sees you as a guy that can take some, harsh criticism here and there then he's not going to be afraid to to let you know um in the heat of the moment uh or in the heat of battle yeah but uh yeah i think that comes down to the coach but i've kind of i've kind of been accustomed to just adapting to whoever <laughs> you know whoever's around me to help trying to create relationships and so we can always do our best to be on the same page out there uh that yeah. i think that's the most important thing is working together you've done it all when it comes to pitching you've been a reliever a starter a closer so does that kind of help you um i don't know maybe just get a better viewpoint of uh being a big leaguer and being able to just like you said adapt to pretty much any situation yeah yeah i mean that's talking about confidence like it, mm-hmm. it definitely has given me confidence in whatever situation i'm i'm put in out there whether i'm starting the game opening middle relief down 10 up 10 tie game ninth inning eighth inning, whatever you know Mm -hmm. i feel like i've had i've experienced all those uh all those situations and that's that's been crucial and it's hard to it's hard to be ready for that moment if you haven't done it before i think the best way and that's why these guys that have pitched for so long in the big leagues are so valuable is because they've been through those situations countless times and they've uh they've learned how to deal with them and um it's it's tough to do when you've never done it before um, yeah. and so that's where that value comes is you know the, the experience that's where the experience really shows yeah well when it comes to the royals uh the season's right around the corner uh, is that kind of like what's your mindset going in because I, I imagine is your role not too specific yet could you be a starting pitcher could you be a reliever um uh, yeah, there's still some, um, some, that type of thing is up in the air a little bit still. I, I know I'm, I'm pretty much showing up to camp ready to pitch two innings in my first outing. I think that's where I'm at right now is, um, be stretched out enough to where if I need to be ready for three, four innings soon, then I'll be ready for that. But if mm-hmm. you need to cut back and be ready for uh shorter stints, like one, two inning. I'll be ready for that as well. So I just I'm going into I'm going into camp ready to um ready to uh kind of adjust how how the team needs me to. If they want me to do middle relief or you know longer longer 
um, the stints out of the bullpen, I'll be ready for that. If they want to stretch me out into a starter, I'll be ready for that or one inning guy, you know, I just yeah. got to be ready for whatever. And then uh, get the hand ready to sign autographs, right? Cause it's spring training. Oh yeah. Get that in shape. Yeah. Walk around in cleats. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's something that you wouldn't think about, but it's true. Like you're not, you go through the off season wearing tennis shoes and comfortable trainers all day and you put some metal cleats on and walk around and you start feeling it. So I yeah. try to, I try to get out on in the spikes as much as I can leading up to it too. It's kind of like girls and wearing high heels then I guess, huh? <laughs> yeah. I mean, in a way, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, well, what are the plans the rest of the day? Cause uh, I guess now you're kind of savoring the last handful of weeks of the off season, I imagine. Yeah. I mean, I think leading up, I mean, yeah, just enjoying family and being around, uh, being around people that I won't get a chance to see very much in the next um, six to eight months and uh, watch, watch some football, um, watch some playoff football yeah. and maybe play golf once or twice more. But I mean, my focus right now, like, especially going into a new organization. Like I wake up, I wake up, get my work done and then go, go see who I, who I need to see before I leave. But my focus is, is baseball and uh, being as prepared as I can be going into this year. Cause it's a big year. Um, yeah. It's a big year and getting to that point in my career where um, I got to go, I got to, I got to be ready for whatever's thrown at me you know, yeah. sink or swim. So, but it's good. It, you know, wouldn't, wouldn't have it any other way. So enjoy a little bit of the barbecue though. Just don't eat too much. Right. The KC barbecue. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I never had that yet. My, uh, my mother-in-law bought me some Joe's barbecue sauce from oh, okay. for Christmas. Uh, she had it shipped out from, it's a can, the big Kansas city barbecue joint out there, I guess. Okay. And so, um, yeah, I love barbecue. I I don't know. It's gonna be tough to it's gonna be tough to uh, control myself there, but yeah. At least you can say there's protein in it, you know. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Well, I was curious um, since you grew up a sports fan, and it doesn't have to just be a sports person. Maybe an entertainment person you like, musician, comedian, actor. Uh, if you had a podcast, is, does anyone jump out like, oh, I'd want to interview them? Like, no limits, uh, all possibilities. Anybody? Yeah. Oh, man. Um, I don't know. That's a good question. I li like, I listen to Howard Stern. Oh, me too. He's good. Yeah, he's good. And like how he gives interviews and stuff. He's got, he's got anybody and everybody on there. So I'm yeah. trying to think who I've listened to that seemed pretty cool to talk to. Uh, Bruce Springsteen was, was, was a good one. I was going to, I was going to ask you that. <laughs> yeah. That'd be cool. If Tom Petty was still alive, probably mm -hmm. him. I went to like three concerts of his growing up. Oh, nice. Uh, I saw him at the Greek theater a few times. No, really? Yeah. In Berkeley. That's sweet. Saw him a few, yeah. Three times, three different times. Uh, ACDC a couple times. Okay. You Shoot. Got, you got good taste then. I told you my parents, are, they were oh, with yeah. it. Yeah, they had, they, they were good. They, they, Gave me some good uh, taste in music, that's for sure. I saw Bruce Springsteen uh, on Broadway. That's a good question, though. Yes, Bruce Springsteen, Bruce Springsteen would be cool. Athlete, though. I mean, Michael Jordan is my favorite athlete of all time. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah, that would be a good one. Uh, he's got the golf, baseball, and basketball covered, so that'd be interesting. Yeah. Talk yeah. to him for hours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just my, his mindset. That That's what I've learned the most from him is – just how how to what it what it is to be a competitor. Yeah, I mean you can learn so much from that guy, baseball player. I, Randy Johnson would be cool. I like the. Never, I always wished I'd be as tall as him growing up. <laughs> Living <laughs> Didn't make guy. it that. <laughs> He's yeah. about a foot taller than me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what is he like six eleven or something or six nine? Yeah, like six that. ten Crazy. something. Yeah, he's from Livermore. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Um, but he's like he's big into photography. Yeah, uh, I think now. I think rock photography too. Yeah, I mean, I could see myself getting into something like that one day. I okay. like photography. My grandpa was a photographer. He's taking mm. pictures of 
he's got my whole life my dad's whole life documented wow. through pictures and it's pretty cool yeah well sam i gotta say it's been fun to uh, have you on the show it was fun meeting you uh, i remember i met you uh i think pre-game on the field when you're on the a's and now we finally made made it happen with an interview so uh it's been fun talking with you and uh looking forward to seeing you uh maybe in spring training or sometime during the season when you come to town yep likewise thanks for having me on i appreciate it